G'day folks and welcome back to the channel. Now I recently did a video on the reissued Gibson Maestro Fuzz Tone pedal, a unit that cost me 300 Australian dollars. Uh, was it worth the money? Well you'd have to watch my video to find out. But as you may know the Maestro Fuzz Tone released in 1962 was the first ever commercially available guitar effects pedal. And once the Rolling Stones used it on their 1965 Mega Smash, I can't get no satisfaction, the Fuzz Genie was well and truly out of the bottle. A 65 was also the year that a music store in Denmark Street, London began manufacturing their own fuzz units to be known as the Tone Bender. Now the Tone Bender was first used on the Yardbirds hit single Heart Full of Soul and I talked about that in episode 3 of my documentary series Loud and Dirty The History of Guitar Distortion and Feedback and there's a link to that in the description box. Now, the Tone Bender was a vast improvement over the original Maestro Fuzz Tone. Uh, the voltage level had been pumped up from 3 volts to 9, and Tone Benders had notably more sustain. And trivia note, the first UK hit single to feature a Tone Bender was Keep On Running by the Spencer Davis Group. Now, that gnarly sound was the original Tone Bender. Now, when it comes to the history of guitar effects pedals, there's no one better to turn to than Josh Heath Scott, a founder of JHS Pedals. And in 2020, his company launched a quartet of units known as the Legends of Fuzz series. Now, these pedals chart the four distinct points in history that the fuzz guitar effect became legendary. There's the Tone Bender, of course, renamed simply Bender, and that's the one I'll be showing you today. The Smiley, which is based on the fuzz face circuit. Supreme, which is an octave fuzz modelled on the Japanese Shin-A, or Companion, or Honey, or Psychedelic Machine, or... Most famously, the Univox Super Fuzz. Uh, they're all basically the same circuit. And finally, the Crimson, which is a version of the Big Muff. And you'll notice that there is a place and year printed on each of these pedals. These pertain to Josh's own personal favourite version of each of these units, and that's the ones he tried to recreate, or reimagine is probably a more appropriate term. So, it's time to show you this thing. Now, I'm not going to really attempt to sort of say this is my first unboxing of it. I bought this a couple of years ago, not long after they first came out. So there you go, JHS Pedals, Legends of Fuzz. All right, we open the box. And you get a very nerdy uh, JHS Pedals sticker. It's just like a circuit board printed on it. Of course, you've got your uh, user's manual. Oh, it's very... Small sort of thing, and warranty details there. Now, then you've got to root through the packaging, the uh, environmentally friendly packaging, because there's always goodies in there. There's little plastic feet there you can stick under the thing, and there's a um, pick, JHS. That's the old JHS logo. Uh, I know he's got new ones that have the new logo, a gravity pick. And there's always, somewhere in here, a badge or a button. Yep, there it is, the JHS pedal button. Okay, let's have a look at the unit itself. Now, knowing Josh Scott, this is probably the exact dimensions of the original Maestro Fuzz Tone. It is beautiful to look at. Um, yeah, that's your classic old wedge-style fuzz unit. It's big. Um, it, you can put a battery in it. There was a red mode button there. All of these units have a mode button, and I'll explain what this one, this particular one does when I get to it. I'm going to be using my artist brand Telecaster style guitar, because it's a handy one, because it's got a split coil option, so we can hear a single coil version, and then we can hear it in humbucker mode, which just sort of saves me changing guitars. Okay, we'll plug it in, and I'll start by playing some sort of really bad... Black Sabbath doomy stuff with the attack on full. I always like to start with the fuzz on full. We'll see how that sounds. And this is in the single coil mode. So here's the clean tone. Really full-on sound to it. It's huge sounding. 
The original tone benders did have germanium transistors in them, but Josh has used the more stable silicon, but he's voiced it like germanium. So um, it's a lot more reliable and it's not subject to uh, change because of uh, heat or whatever weather conditions. It is very noisy, but that is actually not an issue as I will try to explain a little bit later. We're gonna try it now with the humbucker mode, which is immediately gonna be less noisy. to mention as well is the headroom on this thing is insane some pedals you get you really have to crank them to get unity volume and it's not really going to boost your guitar signal by that much i've never known a pedal like this one like if you played a gig and the person front of house the sound person wants you know your clean tone you give it to them and he or she says yes that's great and you have your bender on 10 and as soon as you launch into the first song you jump on the bender you will blow the windows of the venue out i've got this on well less than half it's like 10 o'clock the headroom is unreal now as i mentioned before this unit cost me 300 dollars australian i think they're about 180 in the states if you're ever going to buy a jhs pedal in australia and i've said this before i would always deal with the official jhs dealers in melbourne you've got deluxe guitars and echo tone in northcote uh, you've got pedal empire in queensland i've dealt with them but you're always going to get the best price plus sometimes they chuck in goodies like um, stickers and picks and stuff but they're always just very reliable plus you can just walk into the store yourself and you don't have to pay for postage so this will end up working out more like 290 dollars, i think something like that but that's that's my tip anyway always um, go through the jhs dealers all right so i mentioned there's a mode button on all of these pedals i'm now going to engage the mode button i'm going to go back into single coil mode and what the mode button on this particular unit does is it boosts the mid frequencies so it, it will cut through a mix a lot better it's a really woolly sounding pedal when you click on the, the mode button it definitely starts to cut through a lot more uh, i really like it and i'm recording i think every time i've used it on a recording i've used the mode button i've engaged the mode button it all depends on personal taste because obviously everyone's going to have a different setup and some people might like it and some people might not like it so much but it's a great option jhs always give you a little extra they've always got their own spin on everything if they're reissuing a, a familiar pedal they'll always put their own spin on it so this is with the mode button engaged so this is a more or you know, mid-range trebly tone. probably hear there it actually has a gated spitty velcro rip as well when you have it in the mode position so it's yeah just mighty so so good it really rips your head off now i said before about how i don't consider the noise to be a problem even though it's ridiculously noisy with full attack because the thing is when you roll back the attack on this thing it is a case of less is more it still has loads of really gnarly fuzzy tone but the noise exponentially disappears unlike the joyo orange amp sim that i demoed a while ago where there's all this real estate on the knobs that is virtually useless with this pedal the knobs are really well balanced they all work well with each other and all make a lot of sense and there's good sounds all across the spectrum so now what I'm going to do is roll back the attack a little bit, and this is with the humbucker mode again. A 
Now this time I'm going to take it back out of the mode and back to the regular sound of the pedal, again with the humbucker in play. <laughs> have a place and a year on each of them and that pertains to Josh's favorite version of each of the pedals. As I said the Tone Bender was developed in 1965. Josh's personal favorite version of the Tone Bender that he based this bender on is a 1973 one that he calls Onomatopoeia but the Tone Bender had been used pretty extensively in the 60s and it's pretty much the same general tone all throughout there's a particular characteristic of the tone bender that remains constant as i said spencer davis group then the beatles used a tone bender on rubber soul the george harrison song think for yourself as a fuzz bass jeff beck as i said heart full of soul and then his co-lead guitarist in the yardbirds and later replacement jimmy page used it with the yardbirds you've got to hear a song called think about it which is i think the b-side of their last single and it's just proto led zeppelin and he carried it on in led zeppelin using his telecaster and i'm now going to do a little Here's what I prepared earlier from another video I did called 10 Rock Bands Who Went Out on Top of Their Game where I provided the soundtrack myself where I'm replicating the sound of different bands. So I do a very sloppy Led Zeppelin medley but it's using the bender with the Telecaster style guitar in single coil mode and I have rolled back the attack even more to around about two o'clock and it still snarls it still has this snarly quality so i do a sort of a medley of led zeppelin riffs as i say and i even attempt at the very end to do that reverse reverb slide bit in whole lot of love so hopefully i don't get copyright striped for this here we go with a little led zeppelin medley <laughs> really cool but another band i recreated on that particular video is cream and i've done this little cream medley again i might get copyright matched with this but there's a little medley of um, a couple of their tunes from disraeli gears using the artist les paul style guitar and i've used the bender on both rhythm and lead and you can sort of see where i'm using the neck position pickup with the tone rolled back or the bridge position pickup for um, the strange brew sort of song which is more that classic sort of fuzzy sound so here we go with a little bit of a cream type two song medley
as you can hear there, that's a sort of half-decent recreation of that sort of 60s fuzz-type sound that Cream had during the 67 era. So I'm now going to play the Stratocaster. And again, this is a pre-recorded song, so I'm miming yet again. This is a version of the traditional folk tune, Black is the Colour of My True Love's Hair. And I've sort of remixed it a bit, and I used the Strat on that, and I definitely used the Mode, so it really cuts through. And you're really going to hear the more spitty, snarly version of the Tone Bender here. It's quite unpleasant, but kind of awesome at the same time. So yeah, here's a little bit of an excerpt from another recording. So that's uh, yet another sound you can pull out of this pedal. This is an incredible pedal. I've only really played it with the uh, attack on more than half, but it's it's so incredibly versatile, you can get all sorts of sounds out of this thing. It really is magic. Is it worth the $300 Australian that I paid for it? Well, hell yeah. What are my ultimate thoughts of this pedal? Well, I could probably sum it up pretty simply. I'm banished to a desert island for some weird reason. There is electricity on this desert island and I'm allowed to take one guitar, an amplifier and one pedal from my collection to that desert island. This is the one. This just sort of rips the speaker cones apart when you really crank it. Now I've handed this to a couple of friends and basically said, here, play through this and they have. And they've all said the same three words. I want one. Uh, That's the effect that this thing has. It's just fantastic pedal. Can't talk it up enough. I do own a couple more of the Legends of Fuzz, so if you want me to do my thoughts on those as well, uh, let me know in the comments section below. Now, I've been doing Fuzz Bass in all my demos, so again, I'm going to go back to the 10 rock bands that went out on top of their game, and I'll go out on sort of a version of Roxy Music's Do the Strand and Virginia Plain using the bender for the Fuzz Bass effect. Uh, There'll be some really dodgy miming, but it'll be a good way to go out. So you can hear how the bender sounds with bass. Well, thanks for bearing with me if you've come this far. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I think you might want to buy one of these things because they are certainly worth buying. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time. (laughs) 